thought I would, uh, what would you prefer? I, I, I thought I'd start by introducing our new player. So last night we acquired uh, Tanner Janot from the Natural Predators. Uh, he's a big, fast, physical, top nine forward. Um, he's hard to play against. He plays with pace. He finishes checks often and hard. He can defend. He manages the puck well. He brings his teammates into the fight. Um, by all accounts, he's an all-around great teammate, uh, and he's the type of player that helps you win when it gets hard. Um, his contract status right now, he's under contract for the remainder of this year. His cap number is $800,000, so I believe he's going to bring us really good value for the remainder of this season. He's a restricted free agent in the offseason or next summer, so we control his rights for at least one additional year beyond the current one. So that's checking the three boxes, the player, the person, and the contract. Uh, we have not yet. Uh, we were able to finalize the trade. We were on the plane last night, so it took took a while to get everything uh, ironed out uh, last night. Uh, texted with him <laughs> during the flight. Talked to him this morning. Uh, I expect that at some point we will start, uh, you know, talking about an extension. But more than likely, we'll wait till after the season. Our focus right now is on grabbing the opportunity that we have right now to do something with this season. We have a really good team with a lot of good players, experienced coaches. We have all the ingredients to go on a long run. Hopefully we, we get some luck along the way and, and we're fortunate enough to go on another long run. So the player checks all the boxes. What about cost? Cost? Well, uh, the reality at the trade deadline, you're going to have to overpay. That's how you get the player. Uh, the player goes to the highest bidder. The context of this particular uh, trade as well is that Nashville didn't have to trade him. They control his rights for an, an additional year. He's a restrict free agent. So for us to acquire the player, we would have to make it worth their while. Uh, considering the limited draft capital at our disposal, uh, I thought the way to do this was a quantity over quality type of offer. Uh, luckily for us, uh, we were able to agree on terms with Nashville. At the end of the day, I know there's a perceived value of those picks, but we have a really good idea of what the actual value of those picks are. Individually, you can go, what's that first round pick? What's the second round pick? And so forth and so on. And when we look at what that's worth to us, based on the odds of those picks turning into good NHL players down the road, I'd rather have the good player right now for this season and next and help this group win uh, right now. Because I know what the odds are of those picks turning into players. I also know what the odds of those picks turning into, into players that can help us win while we have this group of players right now in their prime ready to go for another long run. The odds of that are zero. None of those picks were going to help. None of the players we're going to draft with those picks are going to help us win this year or next or probably the year after that. So when you put it into that context and you frame it that way, it ends up being a pretty easy decision, after, actually. Um, you know, we. We have, again, I'm somewhat repeating myself, we have a really good group of players. We have a lot of star players. They're in their prime. They're having good seasons. Uh, luckily for us, they're healthy. Uh, hopefully for us, they remain healthy uh, as well. A lot had to go our way in order for us to accumulate such a critical mass of good players all at, all at once. My job, my responsibility as the custodian for this group is to sometimes take risks to maximize our potential return on this era. And that's what I did last night. We're, we're taking a risk, calculated risk. Can you, can you give us like, any bit of insight into like, how negotiations went bad? Like, do you call Davis? They have office, not all of that. And then you go back to Canada. Like, do you have a few going back with more and more so you get to the point where he says OK? Or? Mm, there are different ways of going about this. Uh, David knew I liked the player going back a long, long time. Uh, you know, we talk to you amongst GMs. We talk to each other on a regular basis. David and I talk to each other on a regular basis. And the fact that um, a lot of our former uh, former staffs are with him, or some of our former players are with him. We did the McDonough trade with him last summer. Um, we do you know preseason games with them. We do um, prospect tournament with them. So we interact maybe more with him than with some, with some of our other GMs. And he knew I liked Tanner. I know I've made him aware of that uh, in the past. So when he got to a point where he was looking at maybe um, selling off players leading up to the trade deadline, he reached out to me. And from there, we agreed on a price. Joe, you 
uh, identified uh, during your midterm basement season speech that if you saw, if you identified an area where you thought you'd help the team or do whatever it took to do the trade deadline and do that, why is this guy the right player for this team right now? Uh, well, we already have a lot of scoring. Right? We, we have one of the top offensive offensive teams in the league. We have one of the top power plays in the league. So those aren't areas that we needed to address. What I thought we needed to address was to be a harder team to play against, to be uh, a team that can win the hard-fought, tight checking games come playoff time. And Tanner Geno is that guy. That's how he plays. He plays in a way that helps you win those games. Uh, I'm not overly concerned, no. I think there's context behind each situation. Um, I think, generally speaking, overall, I think we're, we are a good defending team. Um, even last night, like, the score is not indicative of what you know, the models say it should have been. Um, so no, I'm not overly concerned. I, I wouldn't say I'm concerned at all. But like any team at this point, we, now we're, we're at, at a stretch where we need to consolidate our playoff position, make sure we get in, uh, and, and fine tune our play so that we can put our best foot forward when the playoffs start. Because of your salary cap situation, because of Foot's contract situation, your roster, was he a guy who may not have been you may not have been able to keep next year anyway? Odds are we weren't going to be in a position to offer him a qualifying offer. Uh, the way I'm looking at it right now, we add Tanner Janot, who's going to play in our top nine. Um, he can kill penalties. Uh, coaches will decide how he, they use him, but now they have him uh, at, at their disposal. And we didn't take anyone out of our lineup. Right? Um, Cal wasn't a regular in our lineup this season. And we have two right shot defensemen in Syracuse who can come in in the uh, Tyler Myers and Darren Radish, who can come in and, and play the minutes that Cal would have played if he had stayed here. Julian, you say those three items, player, person, contract. What do you know about him as a person? I know perhaps you only talked to him briefly, but did he say anything that stuck out to you? Uh, well, he has a wife. He has an 11, 11-month-old son. Uh, he's excited to be coming here. He knows uh, he played with, uh, with Braden Point, so he brought up his name a number of times. I knew that. I, I had gotten a good uh, character reference from Bait, uh, Braden in the past. Uh, same with uh, Philip Myers, uh, who he also played with and, and spoke highly of him. Um, and in my conversations over time with, with David uh, as well, because uh, I know that he was trying to sign him at, 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 some, uh, at a certain point, uh, he thought very highly of him as a person as well.